Variables can also occur in inequalities. An inequality is a statement of the relative size of quantities, and when only straight numbers are involved, inequalities are self-evident. For example, 10 is greater than 5, and 88 is less than 102. When inequalities involve variables, they can become a bit more confusing. Think of a variable in an inequality as representing a range of numbers. You may use the same solution methods for inequalities as you use for equations, with one big exception, which we'll discuss in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at an example. 3x plus 14 is less than 5. To isolate our x, we subtract both sides by 14. We get 3x is less than negative 9. Now to finish isolating our x, we need to divide both sides by 3, and our final result is x is less than negative 3. So x can equal any number less than negative 3. See what we mean by a variable in an inequality is a range? x can then equal any number less than negative 3. For example, if x is equal to negative 4, we can substitute that into our equation. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, plus 14 is less than 5. And negative 12 plus 14 is 2, and 2 is definitely less than 5, so that number would work. x must be less than negative 3 for this inequality to work. x cannot be equal to negative 3 since it would make both sides of the inequality equal. Also, x cannot be greater than negative 3 since it would make the left side of the inequality greater than the right side, which would be false. All the rules for solving equations apply to solving inequalities as well. Do the same thing to both sides, don't multiply by 0, and don't multiply by a variable. The big exception to dealing with inequalities occurs when solving inequalities with negatives. When multiplying or dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the inequality sign reverses. For example, negative 1 -fifth x is less than 2. To get rid of the negative 1 -fifth, we need to multiply both sides by negative 5. On our left side, what we end up with is x. On our right side, we end up with negative 10. But because we multiplied across an inequality by a negative number, we need to flip our sign. So now we have x is greater than negative 10. And we can check that right now. If x is equal to 2, then negative 2 over 5 is, in fact, less than 2. You can try plugging in a number that is less than negative 10, and you'll see that this inequality will not hold. Let's apply what we've learned to solve the following inequality. 6x plus 2 is greater than negative 70. To isolate our x, we need to subtract 2 from both sides, and we end up with 6x is greater than negative 72. Now again to isolate for x, we need to divide both sides by 6. And finally, we get x is greater than negative 72 divided by 6, which is negative 12. Let's do one more here. 9 minus 3x is greater than negative 24. In this scenario, to isolate our x, we need to subtract 9 from both sides. And what we get is negative 3x is greater than negative 24 minus 9, which is negative 33. Now, in order to isolate our x, we need to divide by negative 3 from both sides. So remember, we're dividing by a negative number across an inequality. So negative 3x divided by negative 3 is going to leave us with x. Negative 33 divided by negative 3 is 11. But now, instead of greater than, we need to flip our sign, and we get x is less than 11. Excellent. Let's take a look at an in-format question you might encounter on test day. If 3 minus xf divided by 14 is less than negative 3 halves, what is one possible value for f? Well, in this scenario, we're solving for a possible value for f, which means that there might be more than one value. And since we see that there is an inequality, there will be more than one value for f. So let's simplify the inequality we have. 3 minus 6f divided by 14 is less than negative 3 halves. To isolate our f, again, the first thing we want to do is just the same with any equation, get rid of our fraction. We need to multiply both sides of the inequality by 14. On our left side, our denominator cancels, and we get 3 minus 6f is less than 14 times negative 3 halves, which is negative 21. Now to isolate our f, we need to subtract 3 from both sides. And our result is negative 6f is less than negative 21 minus 3, which is negative 24. The last step to isolating our f, though, is going to be division by a negative number. We need to divide both sides by a negative 6, 
Remember what we have to do to our sign. What we get is f on the left side and negative 24 divided by negative 6 on the right side, which is really just 4. But because we divided by a negative number across the inequality, we need to flip it. So instead of f is less than 4, we're left with f is greater than 4. Look at our answer choices. What is the only answer choice that allows us to have a value of f that's greater than 4? f equals 5. Excellent.